Alrighty, hello, hello. Uh, my name is Ash and welcome to the stream. Today I'm going to be demonstrating a uh, Create 0.3 uh, expandable coring drill. Like it, it, uh, it rotates and like cores out a piece of uh, the earth like, um, like an apple core, right? So, let me just check my audio and stuff is working properly. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'll just go to my desktop screen. And you can see here, I have uh, built up this, um, this coring machine. So how it works is that um, we've got a rope pulley uh, that lowers this whole section, everything here, and then w when it stops, it activates this bearing, which spins this drill arm around and cores out a, uh, you know, a circular section like this. And uh, to expand it, um, all you really need to do is that you raise it up, and then you put more, uh, you extend the arm, right, with more chests, more linear chassis, and more drills and it can pretty much be expanded infinitely up to like 2000 blocks I think would be the limit um, but I, I feel like you'd hit a lag limit before you hit a uh, an actual limit so anyway here are the controls and here is the uh, storage so um, you can lower and uh, raise it using this uh, kind of janky um, clutch and gear shift. Um, the, the way this is powered, by the way, it doesn't matter um, as long as the speeds are... Uh, this this speed doesn't matter, but this speed needs to be uh, 64 RPM, but it can be powered um, by pretty much anything, I think. I don't know what the the stress requirements are, but you know, if you set up enough fans um, off to the side or like a furnace engine, that will be able to power this, no problem. Um, so I guess to start with, I'll do a bit of a demonstration. Flicking this lever uh, activates the automated system. Now it's got a bit of a clock to go around here. This is a 1 minute and 40 second clock. Um, and this is just to make sure that it doesn't lower before this finishes its rotations because if it moves while uh, the bearing is rotating, if it tries to lower or raise, then it won't take the bearing with it and it'll break apart. So uh, we've got another what, 20 seconds until it activates. I can stand on, on this platform and watch it, actually. There we go. You can see that it lowered by one block, and now it is rotating this arm around uh, clockwise, although the direction doesn't really matter. And it is going to core out this whole area it's um, jumping around a bit just because the, the speed is pretty high for it to not be the slowest thing ever. Um, but I don't think it's going to bug out because of that. It, it just, yeah, it, it's not animating that great, but um, it is working properly. And so if I've got the timing right on those uh, pulse repeaters down there, um, the way this basically works, I guess I'll explain, is that uh, when this pulley lowers it, right, it'll uh, break this one block, which for some reason doesn't break through the drills already, um, but it will uh, break this um, block be below it, and then these drills will be in position to um, spin again. So um, when it moves down, 
um, this observer will fire, um, sending a pulse here, which activates this toggle latch, which turns on the bearing, or it turns on a fan that powers the bearing to be exact. Um, and I'm speeding up the fan using these uh, adjustable chain gear shifts. Um, and that's what this power is for. And, and there are a couple of workarounds I had to do here, right? Uh, because um, there's a bug right now that um, if you have something powered, it will not remember that it's powered until you update the block um, after you like... Um, so if I, I'll show it over here, I'll demonstrate it. Uh, here. So we've got... Um, these don't matter, but... We've got a cart contrap or a cart contraption here, right? Uh, and this uh, lever is powering this uh, thing on, right? If we were to activate this, it turns the light off, which is fine. But when you re um, place it in the world, this isn't updated, and you need to update it for it to light on. So because of that, I have to tie everything uh, to activate after it moves using this self-resetting toggle latch. Um, so what happens is the observer fires, activates the toggle latch, which turns the bearing on and it rotates. Um, at the same time as this uh, thing turns on, uh, there is a pulse sent out through this block, which uh, triggers these two adjustable pulse repeaters. So this is a delay of one minute and 20 seconds which feeds back into the toggle latch, turning it off, right? So, uh, so basically it is a toggle latch that, or a, a lever that resets itself after uh, one minute and 20 seconds. Um, so, that, so, you know, and all of this is just connected together using either super glue or these radial chassis. Um, so yeah, and, and this system is also tied into, uh, huh, there should be a redstone torch here, but I can't see it. Uh, but it's working, so it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, that's weird, there should be a redstone torch here. But uh, if this wants to update, then that's fine. I'm getting some bugs, right? Where I can actually touch this stuff. Oh, right. That, that Yeah, no, that makes sense. Because um, this part isn't on a contraption right now. But yeah, I thought there should be... Um, we'll see if it, it's broken once it activates again here. I think making the depth drill thicker, say 3x3, three three, so that the radial drill has less minute turns to make wood Okay, so making the depth drill thicker. As in this part? So, are you saying that if I were to uh, put drills on either side of this arm, it would be faster? Now, um, the reason I don't think that's how it would work is because um, the the arm has to pause to break these blocks, for the drills to break these blocks. So, because the arm has to pause... Yeah, it's one set of drills. Um, because the arm has to pause, um, like, wherever it breaks, only, only one side of the drill would be... Um, working. No, I considered using like a, a, like there was one drill going down and then I had drills over here, right? Across this. Um, and I think that would probably be faster, but this is just more simplistic, right? Uh, and it's easier to expand. Um, because like, because the way that the drills work, right? Because they're on this bearing, the further out they are from the center, the faster the drills work, because they're moving faster, right? So... 
Um, so because they're further out, they'll move faster, which means the blocks on the outside will break faster, which means you can expand this without having to adjust the timing, I believe. Um, and it would be very easy to expand, right? To expand it, literally all you need is a linear chassis, a drill, and one uh, chest, and that expands it by one, right? Uh, but anyway, so let's see, what are other systems here that are working? Um, when you retrieve the drill over here, um, it will go past this uh, portable interface, which will uh, suck the items into this buffer, which is sucked up by these fans into these storage chests. Um, and like, I, I'm, there are ways to expand the storage, but I, I just put together something quick because the main part that I was working on was just uh, this part, the actual coring. Um, and it, you know, it creates a nice shape. Uh, so yeah, the advantage of this over say, like a much simpler uh, giant drill platform that goes down is that this takes much less resources to expand it. Um, however, it is slower, right? It's significantly slower. Um, it only does one layer every, you know, minute and a half or so, right? Um, I will say I haven't tested that um, expanding this uh, the drill wider will it actually um, uh, like mean you don't have to adjust the timing, but I uh, will see. I see uh, there's an issue here. <laughs> um, so I guess I actually need to make the timing just slightly longer because it couldn't quite resolve there. I think um, to adjust for different block hardnesses, I am going to up that by 10 seconds. Um, yeah, but I don't really know how to make it like reactive, right? How long it takes um, for it to resolve. So I just have to rely on timers, and timers are a bit iffy, right? Um, I had to use all manner of different um, ways to get this, uh, like, speed up junction. This, um, this speeds it up to four times the original speed, right? So the fan is at 16 RPM, but this bearing uh, is spinning at 64 RPM. So, um, I had to <laughs> use, like, gearboxes and shafts and, uh, like, different orientations of this, um, in case chain drives, because if you put the chain drives, like, for instance, let me give an example, right? If I place chain drives like this, um, they don't connect here, right? So if you span this one, it wouldn't spin this one, which means you could connect them like this and fit more uh, speeding up, right? You could fit more of the adjustable chain gear shafts, which double the speed when powered by uh, a full signal strength. But whenever I was um, lowering or raising this rope, these would bug out, right? And uh, like, I, I wonder if it is it because I'm on a chunk border? I forgot what the... Um, the key for that is, um, no, is it, eh, uh, I don't know, whatever. It might be because I built it on a chunk border, um, but regardless, F3G, let's check, F3G, um, no, it's not because it's on a chunk border, but regardless, it did uh, screw stuff up, so um, that's why I changed up some of this so that these are uh, gearboxes and then there's a shaft here. So there aren't any ways that the, uh, you know, in case uh, chain drives could like accidentally muck up like that. <laughs> so... Um, 
yeah, most of this is just like trying to <laughs> make it not break. Um, the controls here are very complicated, which is why I labeled them even for myself. Um, because if I were to run this, uh, like this can't raise it, or I could, I could implement a system to raise it, but if I use this timer on the clutch, then it's going to raise every, uh, and, and do like a minute, um, like cycle for every time it raised one block, which would not be very convenient. So I've instead got this, um, uh, this retrieval system, but I do have a warning here to not activate the retrieval system while it's still spinning. So what you really need to do to retrieve this is you have to uh, um, lock this clutch by flipping the lever so that the timer isn't um, activating anything or isn't deactivating the torch. Um, and then I have it so you have to flip this to the <laughs> right, um, the, the off, and then you unpower this clutch and then it'll raise. <laughs> I mean, I, I suppose it feels a bit cool, right? With having um, such a complex, uh, how do I say, system. Oh God, I can, I can see right now that I've got some stuff messing up. Um, I am probably, I've got a schematic saved, so I'm not going to try and fix this. I want to see uh, if it will actually break anything if I, if I just leave it as is. I feel like it might pick up a few blocks from the, um, these here. Uh, maybe I should change the distance. So this is four. So let's um, bring them, nope. Five, four, four. And this should be, nope. Um, three, four, all right. So four, oh, this one needs to be, that's, no, that's fine. And that selects everything. All right, good. So yeah, I got a bit of an issue here with the timing, but I don't think it'll actually break the system, even if it goes through here. Um, worst case, it'll pick up a couple blocks. Um, if any of the blocks phase into it, um, it will favor breaking the blocks that aren't part of the contraption. So that's fine. Mm. I was considering doing like a time lapse for watching this quart drill. Um, maybe I'll do that another time. Because I'd have to run it for about an hour, right? Okay, this is really making a mess because the andesite hardness. All right. I'm going to increase the time on this to 45 seconds. So a minute 45, hopefully that's enough to get everything, no matter the hardness. Um, I don't know what will happen when this hits liquid or lava. Um, probably nothing good. <laughs> Curious to see if anything here breaks. Yeah, this is kind of a trial run because uh, I haven't dug it that deep before. So how close is this? Oh, this has still got another. Uh, okay, yeah. So is this about halfway done? Let's check. Um, you can tell by how red this is, but I don't think there's like a Okay, so it's got 45 seconds left. I don't think that's going to be enough. <laughs> hmm. Oop. What was that? 
Okay. Someone commented on the uh, the video on the for the car uh, the uh, what what do I call it cable car that I built earlier. Um, by the way, uh, I'm posting some of like the shorter showcase videos that I want to do on my YouTube. So uh, if you're interested in those, you can follow me there. Okay, so there was a block here that broke. Okay, so yeah, nothing should break. Um, everything will work fine. I am going to clear out these bits manually um, just in case, but you know, nothing's perfect. But yeah, since I've got the schematic, I'll um, yeah, I'll probably do a time lapse of this at another point. Well, I, I suppose I don't really want to keep this stream too long, um, because it's going to be uploaded on on YouTube, and I uh, I don't want people to have to sag through what thirty minutes <laughs> of uh, me rambling when they've already seen how the creation works, but. Um, yeah, you know, feel free to ask me questions in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I, I, I'll upload this schematic at some point, but not straight away, just because um, still a few kinks to work out to make sure that it's working uh, properly. But probably expect that uh, within the next few hours. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for... Uh, <laughs> coming to my TED talk, I guess. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want to, I'm, I'm done, a, I'm doing a create a survival let's play right now. Um, or I've started one and I'll probably be streaming that, uh, later today as well. So if you're interested in that, you can follow me on my Twitch or YouTube. I only really answer the questions on the, uh, like during the stream, uh, on Twitch, just because I don't think I have a chat for uh, for my YouTube, or it doesn't show up in my streamlabs. But anyway, uh, thank you very much for uh, watching, and uh, 